could spot something that the owner might not have seen. I really need you as a professional to explain to the viewers why raw food is so amazing. <laughs> Don't laugh at her. Welcome to Brad's Bark. Today we are here with Nikki Harris and this episode is all about learning the ins and outs of barrel racing because many of you have kids, maybe some of you have experienced the whole horse arena, barrels and going fast and tight turns and fast turns, but there's a little bit more than just getting on a horse and going around some barrels, yes or no? Yes, definitely. Why don't we start with what is barrel racing? So barrel racing is a rodeo event. So it's at the rodeo, it's a competition and it's a speed event. So you're gonna be on your horse and it's three barrels. So you, the idea is that you wanna have the record time mm -hmm. to go around the three barrels and it's a clover leaf. So you have first barrel, second barrel, third barrel. And you wanna make that turn, get out, in and done. And how long does that typically take? Um, on a standard pattern, I would say probably a good time would be 16 seconds, 16.5. 16 seconds? That's fast. What is the distance you're traveling in 16 seconds? So from the starting line, it's 60 feet to the first barrel. Okay, 60 feet. And this is the standard pattern. So depending on the arena, it can be different. Okay. Um, from the first to second barrel is usually 90 feet. Mm -hmm. And then from the third barrel is 105. That sounds like it's a lot of action in a very small period of time. Yes, it is. What does it take to get involved into barrel racing? A lot of dedication, a lot of discipline and responsibilities. So you're saying dedication. What does that look like so the, the viewers understand exactly what this means? So you don't just buy a horse, get on and go. You're gonna have to <laughs> do the Did training. Did you hear that? <laughs> you don't just get on a horse and go. You don't buy it and then, okay, we're ready to go. We're done. Okay. <laughs> no, so you have to have your lessons, training, it takes a long time to get ready to do barrel racing. Some people are fortunate and able to just get a good barrel horse, but sometimes you have to train it and it's got to start from fresh. Holy. <laughs> and how many years would this take then to get into the into competition? Yeah, everyone's different. I mean, it depends on how fast you learn. It, everyone has different riding capabilities. So the quicker you learn, the quicker you're going to get out there. Um, and it is dependent on the horse too. As a kid, we grew up and, and my brother had a barrel racing horse. Is it uh, breed specific in horses or how does, how does this work? How do you select a barrel racing horse? Yeah, it's not breed specific. Um, definitely that some breeds do have higher advantages, but it's not specific. I mean, you can get any horse and go and try barrel racing. It's whether their ability is there to not, to do it or not. Okay. People talk when they measure a horse in hands. Can you explain what that, what so, that means? So, yeah, so one hand is four inches. So, some people say the taller the horse, the faster legs, longer stride, you're gonna get a faster time. Some people say the smaller the horse, the quicker they can turn. So it really depends horse to horse. If their heart is in it, then they're gonna to wanna to win. So if a horse is, co is competitive, uh, is, that, is that a trait that is uh, definitely needed in this sport? Or can you just have a horse that is, hey, I like to be ridden, I like to go around barrels, and it's just fun? I would say it is needed. Not so much the competitiveness, but the will to do it and the want to do it. Some horses aren't barrel horses. It really depends on their personality. Some love it and can't get out of the rain and some okay. definitely don't want to do it. <laughs> Walk us through what it would look like when you are traveling to a competition. Just walk us through all of the responsibilities and what that really looks like so the viewers have a clear understanding on what the responsibilities would look like mm -hmm. and the dedication and the time commitment. Usually the races are on weekends so you're gonna look at Friday you're gonna be out there practicing you're getting your truck and trailer ready getting the tack room ready getting the horse ready. What time would that start at? That's dependent because it's just whenever you want to get out there okay. for that weekend but if it's in the day of the race, you're gonna look at an early morning. Some races so five start- five o'clock in the morning? Yeah, some races start at eight, some races at noon, some at four. Okay. It really depends on the place. Um, if you're looking at a noon race, I know I'm outside about six o'clock in the morning, feeding the horses, getting the truck and trailer ready, getting them ready, loading up, and okay. off we go. <laughs> so now you're, you're traveling to the show, you get there. What, how early do you need to be at the, 
at the show before you get into the ring? I like to get there probably about an hour or two early so that I can tack up. It's not rushed. I can have a good warm up with the horse so I'm getting them ready to go so that I'm not just getting there running and going. Okay. You want to warm them up, stretch their muscles, and I like to be probably a couple hours early. Okay, a couple hours early. Now you're, you're registered. Is there a registration fee? Yes. So depending on where you're going, some places have membership fees. So you're going to have your annual membership fee and then you're going to have an entry fee. And then there's also the timer fees, the arena fees. There is, there is fees involved. <laughs> horses are very expensive. Um, probably buying the horse is the cheapest thing that you're going to spend. <laughs> so now you're, you're going to compete. Uh, you're 15 minutes out before you're off. Are you watching other competitors? What is the vibe in the arena? I like to watch. Some people don't like to watch. It really depends as well on the person. Mm -hmm. I. Yeah, I'm out in the warm-up ring and I'm practicing and probably the next five minutes before I'm up, I'm watching, but I'm also focusing and going over my run in my head and trying to remember all the steps. <laughs> so this is truly an individual sport then? It is, Even yeah. though you're with a horse, it is, it's just you and then the horse obviously plays the bigger role here. Is it called the gate? Yep. Okay, so you're coming up to the gate. What is that, what is that moment like? Before I'm at the gate, I'm thinking, okay, I'm looking at my pocket, I'm looking at my barrel. And... Ooh, what's a pocket? <laughs> so a pocket is the area that you want to look at before you get to the barrel. So that's the spot that you want to start to slow down. You're going to sit your butt in the seat and start to slow them down to make their turn. So that's where you want to look. You don't want to look straight at the barrel. Um, everybody does have their own opinions on this, but for me, I look at the pocket. Once you get to your pocket, you're sitting down, you're going to lift your inside rein, and you're making your way around the barrel. Um, probably about midway through the barrel, you're going to start looking at your second barrel. So wherever you look, majority of the time the horse is going to go where you're looking. So you don't want to be looking at the ground, you don't want to be looking in the stands, the horse is going to veer off their pattern. So you want to look straight to that next pocket, to that next barrel, and same thing, go around, lift your, their inside rein, put your legs on them and go to the next one. So are you holding on? Like, are you leaning in? How, how do people stay on the horse? Yeah, so it kind of depends on the horse and how much training they have. When you get a well-trained horse, you can just do one-handed, just the one hand up. You're going to grab the horn to support yourself so that you can sit nice and low in the saddle so that when you sit, they're actually sitting as well with their haunches. Okay. okay. So with a well-trained horse and that they know what they're doing, you're going to lift up, sit and go around your barrel. Sometimes if your horse isn't trained enough and you are going to use two hands because you don't want them to fall too far out of the barrel. So it, it does depend on the horse. Okay, so you're coming out of the second barrel, going into the third. Mm -hmm. Now what? Walk us through, through that because obviously this is happening in total in 16 seconds. So, you know, we're what, five seconds per barrel, almost. Yeah, so you're coming around your second barrel and you're gonna look straight to your third one again. Mm -hmm. And you're just trying to go as fast as you can because the biggest time is between the barrels and around the barrels. So lots of horses do lose their time turning. So you wanna make sure that you have your horse ready to be able to do small circles because some aren't capable of doing small circles quickly. So you gotta get that going and then you're looking at your third barrel and turn and as soon as they go home they know to go home they're ready <laughs> really they yeah. just it's just like <sighs> yeah take me there <laughs> okay there's 16 seconds and that took a few minutes to to say but a lot is happening in that 16 16 5. Mm -hmm. you you started at the gate and you're finishing at the gate yeah how long does it take for the horse to, to slow down or stop do you so usually um the starting line is the 60 feet from the gate so you do have, as soon as you pass that timer, you want to keep an eye out to see where the timer is. As soon as you pass it, then you can start slowing them down. And then some take a, take a little bit to stop, some can stop on a dime. How many uh, races do you have in a day, or does that vary? Um, for the majority of it, it's one. So oh. you're traveling whoa, across whoa, whoa, the province whoa. for 16 seconds. Are you kidding seconds. me? When you mention dedication, you're oh, yeah. really talking <laughs> Uh, the extreme dedication. I mean, that's only 16 seconds. And if you don't win, okay, if you win, do you win prize money? Yep. So depending on the race, there's usually added money. And then usually a percentage of the entry fee gets like divided up. Um, majority of the races are in four divisions. 
So you get your 1D, 2D, 3D, and 4D. Okay. So the fastest time is going to place the 1D. Depending how many people are there and how many payouts determines how many people they can place in each division. Mm -hmm. So from 1D to 2D is 0.5 seconds. From 2D to 3D is another 0.5 seconds. And from 3D to 4D is another 5. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. What do the payouts look like? How much? How that, much are we talking here? <laughs> it really depends on races. Your smaller races, probably a couple hundred, even less than that. Sometimes your big races, you're looking at hundreds. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me get this right here. You go across the province. There's fuel cost, hotel, food, feed the horse. Uh, obviously go for a bevy after. <laughs> and then you drive back and you make a, a couple hundred dollars. If you're gonna go across the province, you're probably gonna go for a bigger race. It's the, the local ones, if you're staying close, those ones are a little bit less. But you're gonna make it worth your while too. We're here at Peachland Riding Club. These are the barrels that we use to practice with. And we're gonna set them up, so you have three barrels. From the gate to the first barrel is about 60 feet. From the first barrel to the second barrel is about 90. And then you're gonna go from the second to the third, about 105 feet. So we're saddling up. We're putting his cinch on. Tightening the saddle. So these are the SMB boots, sports medicine boots. And they're to help protect his legs. boots and they're gonna help protect from overreaching so that when he's running and striding that his back legs don't overreach and cut himself. So this is the bit and that goes in their mouth to help with direction and then this little piece here is called the bit guard and that just helps from pinching if there's any bits between the cheek and the bit. Are you having fun yet? Always. <laughs> Anything with horses. With barrel racing, you're doing lots of circles and running at top speed. So you want to make sure that they're stretched out and warmed up and all their muscles are warm, limber, so that you're not just running and going. Usually I like to do lots of circles and then some trotting circles and then some loping, so different speed ranges and then kind of see where he's at from there and depend if we have to go more. Sometimes when you bring a horse to a new spot, they just are all about the surroundings. They want to know where they are, who's around them. So they're not always going to be paying attention to you when you go somewhere. So now he's finally like, oh, this is what we're doing. both ways the same amount of time when you're warming up. Now we're going to start to trot the pattern.
Watch out, rocket! <laughs> So you want to look at your next barrel when you're coming around the corner. So the reason you look at the next barrel is the horse is always going to want to go where you're looking. So even though you're looking that way, your hips are still moving that way. So where you're looking, horse is usually going that way too. <laughs> Cisco is a quarter horse, it's Arabian, and he's about 16 years old. He's 15'3 in height, so it's 15 three hands, so one hand is approximately four inches. And we got him about when he was 13 years old, and he was actually a cow horse, so he wanted to do sorting and penning, and we decided to start barrel racing with him. And he loves it. He's very competitive, so he's always wanting to go, and he's very willing, so he wants to always please whoever's riding him. Good boy. Let's go. So this is the amazing Cisco, the Speedster, and then we have the wonderful Nikki Harris who is on this beautiful, beautiful horse. They're so fast together, they just whip around these barrels like no tomorrow. So is this a sport for kids? Oh yeah, absolutely. The younger you get into it, the more hooked you are. It's a, but it must be an amazing adrenaline rush. Adrenaline, everything. It's, I can't even get over it, it's so much fun. And do you enjoy that? Hey, do you have fun? Yes, you must get some nice special treats right now. Oh yeah. Okay, thank you for joining Brad's Bark. I mean, this was phenomenal to experience and witness up close and personal with Nikki in the arena. Cisco, you know, just, this is an amazing, beautiful partnership. And I want to thank you all for joining Brad's Bark on Shaw TV.